Hey guys, before we get started on this video, I have some pretty massive news. So last week I talked about how I'm hosting a seminar May 19th and 20th at Tribe Strength in Milton Keynes in England. I just booked another seminar, this one is in Ireland, and I will be joined by none other than Clarence Kennedy. One of the most common errors I try to fix with my beginners is in their front rack. Many people have been taught that as long as the barbell sits on the anterior delts or on the front part of the shoulder above the clavicle, that it doesn't much matter what your hands do. I have an example of this cue and it is a CrossFit Level 1 seminar staff. Again, I feel like I'm always picking on these people. Just bear in mind that I do respect CrossFit tremendously for what they do. Um, I feel like as a methodology, they get a lot of flack, uh, but they are bringing the snatch, the clean and jerk, the deadlift, these main movements to the fitness world. However, I think that they need to do a better job at, at what they're doing. Um, they need to rethink their cues and they need to adapt. But anyways, here's the video I'm talking about. Uh, she has a loose fingertip grip on the bar. Okay, she's not holding it on to all or holding onto it with all five of her fingers, kind of death gripping it. She's gonna let it roll back into her fingertips. She's gonna drive her elbows up. I'd like to see the tricep parallel to the ground or even higher, okay? The biggest concept here is Margo's so strong, I could come hang off of this bar and it's not gonna go anywhere because it's resting on her body. It's not something she's holding in her hands. So in this clip, the coach says the bar is resting on her body and not something that she's holding in her hands. My issue with that is that those two things shouldn't be mutually exclusive. You should be able to rest the bar on your anterior delt and keep it above the clavicle, but also keep your whole hand on the bar. Many of you are hearing this and you're immediately thinking, I don't have the mobility in the wrist, elbow, shoulder, whatever, to do something like that. It's something that I would say is that it most likely has to do with your mobility in your hips, knees, and ankles. So something that needs to happen in the front squat, back squat, clean and jerk, snatch, clean pull, all of those movements is that posture in the thoracic spine. Now, if you think about your particular front squat or your particular back squat or air squat, does your thoracic spine, is it compensated as you go down? In other words, can you extend your thoracic spine and can you flex and extend your knee joint, your hip joint, your ankle joint? If you can do those things, then you can keep your whole hand on the bar. We talked about this a lot in my last video that people who are having issues in the overhead squat, it actually stems from things that were happening in their hips. But the people of CrossFit pointed to their shoulders and they saw this, so they told them to do this. Now basically, it's the same concept with the front squat. They see people aren't able to keep their elbows up. That bar comes forward. So all they say is, we're gonna compensate by saying, make sure your elbows are forward. I don't care how many fingers you have on the bar, if any, because it's gonna be resting on your anterior delt. Now the issue with that is that you're allowing the athlete to compensate for their lack of mobility in the hips or lack of strength in the hips by allowing them to thoracically round. You can have your elbows damn near parallel to the floor, but you can still have a rounded spine. So if our cue for all things front squat is to not worry about the hands, it sets us up for future failures. Usually at this point in my argument, there's someone on the other side that says, if you just wanna learn the movements and be able to do them as a novice athlete, listen to the CrossFit coach. But if you want to be able to clean and jerk or snatch or front squat the most weight possible, listen to the Olympic weightlifting coach. I struggle to understand this because regardless of numbers, regardless of how much weight you would like to lift, whether it's a PVC pipe or a barbell or 200 kilos, you should learn the most optimal way. Because when that lifter becomes proficient enough in the style of clean or jerk or front squat that you taught them, the one that allows them to keep moving through the movements even though they may have deficiencies, when they become competent in those areas, they're gonna wanna go heavier and they're gonna wanna clean and jerk more. They're gonna wanna snatch more. And this is usually where I get my clients and my lifters. They come to me with a background in CrossFit where they learned the lifts 
and they say, I wanna be better at the clean and jerk and I wanna be better at the snatch and the front squat and the back squat. And so I can't just cue them to do the right thing. They have an inefficient movement pattern. I actually like to think of weightlifting systems like China, for instance. What really happens in the Chinese systems with their youth is that they care just as much about body positioning as they do about bar positioning. What I mean by that is they have the lifters always in the same position all the time. So one of those positions is extension in the thoracic spine. You'll commonly see children weightlifters in China. They're always up like this. They're always pushing their head forward. They're always, always, always open chest, flexing that thoracic spine, flexing through the entire spine. Now, after years of working in these positions, they have developed the strength to always be in that position. So now when a coach wants to fix something here and there and they're snatching their clean and jerk, they can do so. They can tell them, hey, you didn't pull hard enough or you didn't extend long enough or you didn't bring your elbows up when you were pulling underneath. They can give them those cues because they don't have deficiencies in strength in areas where strength is absolutely necessary. So now we go back to that fingertip front squatter who doesn't have the development in their thoracic spine. The first thing that I have that lifter do is learn how to get their full hand on the barbell and work their way back up. So if you are one of those people that struggles to get your whole hand on the bar for the clean or the front squat, I have a few drills that can help you out. So first and foremost, you're gonna wanna warm up your squat and loosen up your hips. Our goal here is to maintain thoracic extension while we move dynamically through the full range squat. If needed, I can provide another video entirely on fixing the squat, but for the most part, a good litmus test is if you can deliberately flex and extend your back at the bottom position while sitting in maximal depth. For the next step, strap into the barbell using lifting straps. This is to make sure that you don't bail out your thoracic spine by rolling the bar into your fingertips. From here, press the barbell overhead. Then, slowly bring the barbell down while pushing your elbows forward until the barbell reaches the front rack. This is the point where you could be freaking out because your body isn't used to this position. No worries, just press the bar overhead again and reset. Quinn Hennick of Juggernaut Training Systems talks about the efficacy of this one in one of his videos. In this drill, you develop the tension of the thoracic extension when the barbell is overhead. Then you just try to maintain this tension as you bring the barbell down. In step three, front squat. Yep, this one's gonna be tough, but this is the goal. This is where you'll see that you want to compensate for lack of strength in the thoracic spine. If you struggle with this one, repeat step one and two, and then come back to this. Step four, once you've already got the front squat, here you have the SOTS press. This is the ultimate test of proper strength in the thoracic spine and mobility in the hips. Work towards this. For some of you, this may seem impossible, but I promise you, if you can't do this, you can't optimize the clean and jerk. And then now an optional step five. If you're feeling cheeky, stand up out of the now narrow grip overhead squat. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. Go to my seminar in Ireland. Clarence is gonna be there. We're gonna be lifting big weights. I don't know what else to say, you know. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Academy for, for everything that they've done. You know, this has just been such a great, uh, great year so far. Everything's amazing. You guys are just so great. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Thank you. For real, for real. I can't even, I can't tell you how much you mean to me. You mean so much to me.